I feel the need. The need for speed. Ow! Welcome back, everyone, to Bearing Up. Uh, we are going to jump start uh, this new series that we have about seeing Christ uh, in film, uh, to see Christ in everything. Um, we gave a, sort of an introduction to this last week, uh, and so if you're interested in learning more about why we're, we're, we're talking about Top Gun, uh, Top Gun Maverick today, um, you may want to go back to that, that other video to kind of explain what we're doing here. Uh, but basically what it is is we're trying to see Christ in the films that we watch and, and enjoy. Uh, and so we're looking at this new film. Uh, we're going to dig into really the main theme uh, that is uh, apparent throughout all of the film. Um, we're going to dig deep. Uh, we're going to talk about action movies uh, themselves and, and why uh, we like action films, but also how they relate to uh, the story of the gospel. Uh, so, but just to begin with, um, Top Gun Maverick is a great standalone movie, um, but it follows Captain Pete Maverick Mitchell about 30 years after the events of the 1986 film Top Gun, um, and the film has been an incredible success. Uh, it's a great movie. Um, I really enjoyed it a lot, um, but it's development upon everything that made the original great it just goes beyond uh everything that made that movie great and and it just built upon it and made it such a wonderful uh film and, and there's actual flying that takes place all the actors they had to learn how to fly a plane and 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 go through uh all of the the training uh in order to to be able to uh, deal with that uh, and with no use of CGI or anything like that. Uh, so it's an incredible film. It's an incredible film, intense, patriotic, um, lots of action and drama. It's nostalgic, but it's not overdone. Uh, again, I think it could be a good standalone movie. Uh, the basic story of it goes like this, and there's going to be some spoilers if you haven't seen uh, the movie. Um, there's a hostile country uh, that has unauthorized uranium enrichment uh, plant that's located at the bottom of a trench in a deep canyon. Uh, and it's surrounded by SAM missiles and radar jammers, and it's under watch by some superior fighter jets uh, than what can be used for the mission to try to take out this um, enrichment plant. And Maverick, this is Tom Cruise's character, he's tasked uh, to take the best fighter pilots in the Navy and train them for this specific mission. With all of its incredible hazards, and they're given three weeks' time to, to train for this. Um, and he wants to do without casualties. And uh, it's, it's just kind of framed to be an impossible task. The, they're... There's this impossible mission, uh, and everybody is against him, and uh, even the pilots themselves are wondering, how are we going to do this? There's some unorthodox teaching, uh, or I guess unorthodox kind of ways of, of trying to figure out how to, to do this. Um, but ultimately, uh, Maverick himself joins the team. Originally, he's tasked to, to just teach them, even though he really wants to be a part of it. Eventually, he does get to join the team as the leader, uh, and he brings everyone home safely in the end. Uh, another big part of the movie is the strain between Maverick and Rooster. Um, he is the, the son of um, Maverick's NFO in training in the first film, Goose, uh, who dies in a training exercise in that original film. Uh, and so there's a strain between them, but there's a strain between other characters as well and so just kind of talking about the the, the gist of the movie uh, we're going to for our purposes look at two aspects today uh, that help point 
to the gospel, uh, two aspects of the film that help point to Jesus. Um, and again, this is a film, uh, there's no references, uh, at least that I'm aware of, to, to God or faith or, or anything about the gospel at all. Uh, but with the main theme and, and with aspects of the film, uh, we can point to, to Jesus and the gospel. Um, and there's going to be, if you look at the film, if you've watched it before, it, there's so much more. And I think there's, there's a lot that I wanted to talk about today that I'm just not able to because of time. Uh, this would be a longer video than it is or podcast than it's going to be. So we're going to just stick to two things. Uh, first, before we talk about the main theme, uh, which is going to be sort of the main thing that, that we really link back to as far as the content of the film and, and how that relates to Jesus, we're going to talk about how action films, action movies themselves, uh, and the action that's in Top Gun Maverick, how that reflects the gospel. Uh, this is kind of a strange thing, and if we if we look at some of the other action films uh, that we're we're planning to do uh, later on, we're not going to go in, as in depth about action films um, generally uh, in relation to those movies. So we're going to just begin uh, with Top Gun Maverick, um, and there's a lot of movies, and, and I guess pretty much every movie that exists is is meant to take you somewhere. It's meant to to put you in a, in a place, immerse you in a story where you feel like you're you're tagging along for the ride, and it doesn't matter what the genre is. It can be you know a love story, or it can be a a action movie. It can be a thriller, and uh, you know this is why people scream or they flinch in horror movies uh, and the jump scares. You know, logically, when you're watching those films, you know that it's just a movie. But your eyes and your ears, they take in the stimuli like you are actually there. You jump at the monster because it frightens you, even though you know that it can't touch you. You're not really in danger. It's a film. You know, you can just, you can walk out of the theater or you can, you know, press the pause button. You can stop the movie if it gets too bad. You know, you, you know all of that stuff, but you still, your heart races and, and all of that takes place and so with Top Gun you've got the loud jet engines and the intense scenes of these narrow escapes and and dangerous maneuvers and all of this is designed to raise your blood pressure and adrenaline it's supposed to make you feel stress that's the design in it uh, that's why we find it enjoyable is because of the stress now usually when we think about stress this is not something that we that we want right we want to alleviate stress in our lives we don't want to be stressed out um and we might even say well we watch movies to relax well your brain is still uh viewing what's on screen and your ears are hearing you know all of this it does raise your heart rate it does make you excited it does build you with some adrenaline uh, one of Tom Cruise's deals about this movie is that the actors would have to be filmed flying actual F-18s in the air. Uh, they weren't going to do this in, in a studio and some kind of gyro thing. They wanted to get them in the air and film in the air. And so all the shots of them flying, the actors had to be trained on, on using the different instruments and, and even being able to start the camera and the equipment so that they could film themselves in the air. Uh, I mean, this is this was an incredible feat. Tom Cruise said that, you know, we there's probably never going to be another movie like this. Uh, there's never been a movie like this before. Um, uh, be, just because of, of how complicated uh, the training was and, and having to get them to do all that they needed to do in order to fly the planes, but also, um, you know, do the film. And, and the G-forces and all of that is, is genuine. Uh, because they're actually flying in those planes. Um, originally, Tom Cruise wanted to do a film like this with the first Top Gun. Um, some of the scenes from the original are Tom Cruise actually flying in the in the plane, um, but they weren't able to do that in the first film because uh, the other actors would 
they would throw up or their eyes would roll back in their head or they, they just couldn't stand it because they didn't have the training. Um, but he was glad that his dream was more fully realized in, in this movie because of the training and everything that went in place to prepare the actors for what they did. And this is what he said. With the original film, what he was able to do with this uh, new film. I wanted to give the audience that experience of what it's like being a fighter pilot and what that world is like and the culture of it. And so it is from the design of this movie to put you in the cockpit. When you're watching this movie, the shots of the pilots, the dead on shots with with the you know surrounding environment and being in the air, it's supposed to make you feel like you're in the cockpit of an F-18. Now, with that, like any other action film, uh, it's supposed to heighten your senses. It's supposed to make you feel like, yeah, again, that you're there and that adrenaline builds and it's, it's building and building. But ultimately, it's built up so that it can be brought down, right? That stress is, is illicit from you and, it, and it's brought up in you so that it can be brought down again. Let's think about it for a moment. Every action film has cooldowns. Um, even if it's an, a, an, an action film that's lots of action throughout the entire film, there are sequences uh, where there's a break, right? There's an action scene, a big scene, and then there's, there's some break. There's some dialogue. There's something. Maybe there's, you know, uh, there's, some, there's some way in which there's a little bit of a cooldown. Um, you know, it's not explosions the entire time. Uh, if a film was just entirely stunts and explosions, no dialogue and no resolution, uh, there wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be a very good movie at all because we desire that that resolution as well. We want to be brought down from the stress. We don't want to just experience stress, experience stress, and and, and then we're just stressed out. We we want to feel that that adrenaline and that excitement and then we want a resolution we want it to be you know brought back down we like the narrow escapes because there is an escape at the end um we wouldn't be too thrilled with a movie where there's a main character and he tries to escape and it looks like it's, he's about to escape and he fails and then the movie just ends like that <laughs> that, that that doesn't sound like a very good movie uh there there's no resolution um, you know, we feel like whenever there's a cliffhanger ending for a movie that you want to see the next part, right? You want to see how it resolves. I mean, there are movies and sometimes we like that cliffhanger is like, what's going to happen next? We're excited about it, but that's the thing. We want to know what happens next. We want the resolution. We want to know how that, that stress, that, that being put in that difficult situation or whatever it may be is is brought back down we want that conclusion the short-term stress that is elicited in action movies is only successful if the viewer finds resolution um, if there is that that cliffhanger ending you want to see the next film um, you know if you enjoyed that film and and you met that cliffhanger, you want to know what happens at the end. Now, there's not really a cliffhanger with, with this film, uh, but I do want to talk about that since uh, that is sometimes the case with, with action films. Um, but we want to find resolution. You know, we want to, the fight needs to end. It needs to be over. The escape is made. The hostages are saved. The mission succeeds. You know, and, and that's what we find uh, in Top Gun Maverick, right? Each each one of the, uh, you know, the scenes, the action scenes, there's something that happens and there's suspense and then it's brought down. Uh, and this ultimately happens several times throughout the movie. Um, you know, these action sequences are brought up and then they're, they're brought back down. Um, but what does, what does that conclusion or resolution for short-term stress, how does that have anything to do with the gospel? Really, really? How is the gospel related to action films as a whole in that way, and particularly in Top Gun Maverick? Well, we 
we want peace from the real anxiety and real stress that we have in our lives. We want to take a deep breath and realize that everything is going to be all right. You know, we, we want to have that, you know, we, we do experience stress. We do experience anxiety in, in real life. And we want to make it. We want to make it in life. We want to make it to the end. We want to survive and more than survive, we want to be at we want to be at peace. We want to have contentment. We want to be okay. We don't want to live with anxiety. We don't want to deal with stress. Uh, we want that to be back brought back down. Um, that's often why we can tolerate it in the short term in a movie, uh, but it's less tolerable when we deal with stress in our everyday life. We want a conclusion. Now, I'd like for us to, to listen to how Jesus provides peace and conflict to the disciples in John chapter 16, verses 32 and 33. And in this context, we have to recognize that Jesus is about to leave the world. Uh, he's given them lots of warnings and different things like that. And, and notice just what he says in verse 32. Behold, an hour is coming and has already come. For you to be scattered, each to his own home, and to leave me alone. And yet I'm not alone because my Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. Now, despite the tribulation and the trouble that is in the world, and and Jesus warns them one of them is going to betray him and uh, that Peter's going to deny him three times and, and there's going to be the scattering that he talks about here. Despite the tribulation and trouble, which has to be present in its context, you have to, they have to acknowledge that that's there in order for the victory to mean anything. Despite the tribulation, they know and can know and have faith of the victory and the conclusion. I have overcome the world. Jesus says, I have overcome the world. In that, they're to have peace. Peace despite the stress that they were going to experience in him being uh, taken prisoner and crucified Um and uh, being scattered and, and all of this, they were to have faith and they were to supposed, supposed to have peace in that. Um, it's the same attitude that Paul has uh, when he's in jail and he's writing to the Philippians and he talks about the peace and contentment he has, even though he's in prison. And that peace comes from Jesus and because he overcame the world, because he is the victor. Jesus brings the conclusion, the victory and the overcoming that we all desire. Every person, every human being experiences stress and anxiety and fear. And all of these things uh, are present in the world because we live in a fallen world. We all want a conclusion. We all want the, the peace to come from the stress that we experience. And in Jesus, the stress, the anxiety, the fear ends and so we we feel the stress in the movie and then we're brought back down to a conclusion a, a, a peace that comes in the end and we identify that as something that compels us or moves us because that's what we desire for our own lives we desire the stress to you know we not acknowledge it's there. We acknowledge that, you know, something difficult is happening or it has happened. But then despite that, there's peace and it, it comes from Jesus Christ. And, and so the reason why we love action movies uh, is because uh, we, we can identify that in our own lives, even though they are very different our stress is very different from the, the kinds of action oriented stress that we have uh, that we see in movies 
they're still brought into a, a conclusion. They're, they're still a, a victory in the end. Uh, and so this is just one aspect uh, of the film Top Gun that uh, leads us uh, to the gospel. We're going to talk about the main idea, the main uh, theme in the next part of this video. But first, uh, let's have a mid-roll. Don't go away. Uh, we'll be right back after the break. Thank you so much for watching or listening today. Uh, we want to invite you to please like, subscribe, follow uh, on our social media. Comment on this uh, if you're able to or leave us a review. Um, we're on all social media. Uh, please watch the show or listen to us anywhere, um, just about anywhere. Uh, Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, any of those places. You can also listen to us on the Ministry League app. Uh, we want to give a shout out to the Ministry League. Uh, they're a great network of, of individuals, lots of podcasts, Christian resources. Check them out. If you haven't downloaded the app already, please do so. Um, and check out the Bearing Up Shop. Uh, there is apparel and mugs and other things there uh, that you can uh, purchase in order to support this work, uh, support this channel. Um, all of that goes to uh, the work of Bearing Up. Uh, so. Thank you so much for supporting us in that way, uh, supporting us by watching the channel, again, reviewing uh, us on Apple Podcasts or things like that on Spotify, uh, commenting, liking, all that stuff. Uh, appreciate that, and thanks for sticking with us. Uh, let's jump back into our discussion. All right, so as we jump back in, we're talking about the main, the main theme for the film, uh, and pretty much for the entire the entire movie the particular focus is the need for restoration um, this is this is a common theme uh, through a lot of movies uh, but there is essentially this idea which is true throughout the entire movie a, a call a need for restoration so from the very beginning of the film, there's an aging pilot, Maverick, uh, who is trying to recapture his sense of adrenaline and newness um, by testing uh, this new Dark Star scramjet and pushing it past Mach 10. He wants to, you know, he still wants to be a pioneer. He still wants to be, uh, you know, the best. He he is trying to restore uh, maybe some things that he has from. From when he first started as a pilot, he's afraid of losing who he is. Uh, he doesn't want to quit being a pilot. Uh, and so he's trying to reclaim that, restore that. Um, and this leads into how Maverick's career in the Navy also needs restoration because he's constantly having to get bailed out by Iceman, uh, his former rival, to keep from being grounded. Uh, and there's this conflict about... Um, whether they're going to continue to have manned planes or they're going to have drones do everything. Um, and so uh, even though he was once at the top, now the Navy has to put up with him and he has to try to restore this, this honor of his or restore the honor of the pilot over the drone. Um, you know, so there's that, that tension and that conflict that's there. Then there's the relationship between Maverick and Bradley Bradshaw, who is Rooster in the film. And he needs restoration with him for two reasons. Number one, Maverick is trying or was trying to impede his career as a pilot. He was trying to get him to, to not pass, uh, to not move on, to not become a pilot because of a promise that was made to his mother. Um, you know, this is Goose's widow and uh, Rooster's mom uh, there's a promise that's made uh, that he would not become a pilot and so Maverick has been trying to impede his career even though he really wants to be a pilot and, uh, and so there's that and then number two Rooster also blames and holds Maverick responsible for his father's death you know, they were in the same plane uh, and had to eject if you uh, hadn't seen uh, the original film. Uh, they uh, 
he, he dies in an accident and uh, it is with Maverick. So he holds Maverick responsible for that death. And then there's a conflict between Brewster and another pilot, Hangman, uh, who becomes his rival and he has a different approach uh, to to life and social things, but also to to flying. Um, and then there's there's Maverick's relationship with Jenny, who's his previous girlfriend. He there's this sort of uh, he wants to restore things with her as well. And so by the end of the film, uh, all of these problems meet their suitable conclusions. You know, Hangman and Rooster they become friends. You know, the guy gets the girl. Rooster becomes a great pilot, and he becomes a friend of Maverick. Uh, Maverick gets respect from the Navy. He comes to terms with who he is and where he is in the world. And so it just couldn't get any better. The ending of the film is, is just fantastic, and all of these little pieces and all these little conflicts are, are brought together in the end, and everyone you know, meets that, that resolution. Um, how does all this conflict and, and resolution relate to the gospel and why we enjoy this movie in the first place? Um, because all of these things are supposed to lead us to the gospel, that lead us to Jesus. Um, it's because, the reason for this is because we are compelled by restoration. We're all compelled by restoration. Ingrained in every human being is the need to be resolved and, and to have, you know, the happy ending, to have uh, our relationships restored and to have a greater restoration, honestly, that, that every human being is compelled and all of creation is actually compelled to have. And so on that note, you're probably thinking of Romans chapter 8, which we're going to look at. Romans chapter 8, verses 18 through 25. Paul writes, For I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the anxious longing of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope, that the creation itself also will be set free from its slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and suffers and uh, suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. And not only this, but also we ourselves, having the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our body. For in hope we have been saved, but hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he already sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, with perseverance we wait eagerly for it. So, from the time that the earth was corrupted by sin, the fall of, of man, we have wanted to be renewed. We, we want this restoration to God, to be what God originally intended for us to be, to live in a world, to live life without sin and death. We want restoration. We, you know, the creation groans in the pangs, the pains of, of childbirth. Uh, even to that time and, and even today, um, beyond what Paul's written, we experience it today, this, this sort of longing for something better. There's pain, there's toil, there's, there's trial. We want the restoration. We want the newness. We want everything to be resolved. We want everything to come together and be complete. When we reach the end of this movie and everything just ties up so nicely, there's a brief moment where we feel completion. We feel contentment and we feel peace because everything just comes together as it should be. It just, everything is resolved. Everything comes together. These relationships that are in tension, every one of them is restored. 
there's restoration that takes place. Um, we enjoy movies that wrap up nicely because that's what we want for our own lives. We want our own lives to resolve nicely, to have our purpose for having lived. And uh, we want it to end at the right note, but we also want, we do want that restoration that comes in God. The only way that we can have restoration the kind of restoration that we all identify with and we all desire is to be a child of God, to be a child of God, to have the hope of restoration in Jesus Christ. You know, we want something better than what this world gives. And the only way that we can, uh, can have that is in, in Jesus. We like films where there is a lot of resolution that needs to take place and those things are brought to fruition it's and there's you know the happy ending there's the resolution there's the restoration of relationships and conflict and and all of that is is brought together first peter chapter 5 and verse 10 says and after you have suffered a little while the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. That's what we all want. Whether we realize it or not, whether we understand it or not, the reason why we like these movies, uh, that we enjoy them and we, we identify with them, is because this is our story. We are human beings made in the image of God. And within every one of us, there is a need to be brought back together with God. Um, there is a tension between humanity and God. There's a tension between uh, us and, and him. And we want to have that restoration made whole. We want to be... Uh, back with our creator we want to be unified in the one that we are made in the image of um, and so it is in jesus christ that we find that hope it is in jesus uh, that we find that restoration and so while this movie doesn't uh you know preach the gospel uh while the movie does not uh innately say why we need the gospel um it does reflect uh, that need that we have, uh, the need that we have for peace from the stress that we have in the world uh, and the need that we have for restoration uh, from the brokenness uh, that we experience in this world and the distance that we have um, between ourselves and God. We want restoration. Uh, again, I really enjoyed the film. I, I enjoyed this discussion. Uh, I really would appreciate some feedback on this to see if this is something we need to continue to do. Uh, I think that this is a kind of a fun way of, of looking at some pop culture things uh, in, in light of Christianity, in light of the gospel. Um, and so I'm thankful to have had the opportunity to talk about this today. Um, we're going to close with prayer and stick around for the sermon spotlight. Um, thanks so much for watching or listening today. Um, Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you that we can see you everywhere, that we can, no matter where we look, uh, we see your love and your care. Uh, we are able to see our great need for you. And we ask you, dear Lord, that you would restore us. If there's anyone listening uh, today, dear Lord, please be with them and help them to uh, know the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, to repent of their sins, be baptized into Christ. And and to know you, um, pray, dear Lord, that if anyone is seeking, that they would reach out. Um, we ask you, dear Lord, to uh, be with us today and help us to know you everywhere we look. Uh, we thank you that we can see this even in the movies, uh, even when it is not the intent of the filmmakers and uh, those who are involved um, to, to show you uh, you are still able to be seen. We thank you so much, dear Lord, for this. Uh, we thank you for the blessing of Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Uh, the Servant Spotlight uh, this week goes to uh, Chris and Doug Loftus. 
Um, both of them have been working really hard uh, here at the Moultrie Church on our new streaming equipment and, and uh, how we are operating uh, live streams for our worship. Uh, there's been a lot of work on that uh, from both of them uh, in trying to install everything uh, and uh, trying to get it to work. And it has looked really good, uh, I think, over the last couple weeks. Uh, and so I'm very thankful for the hard work that they put into that. Uh, this was something they just kind of stepped up and and uh, did, and it is a huge improvement of what we had before. Um, and so I'm thankful for the, for the elders for um, for doing this and and uh, you know, updating our system. Uh, but I'm thankful for. Uh, Doug and Chris particularly for installing it, making sure it all works, and uh, doing it, being in charge of it each week um, to make sure that we are up and we are live uh, when services happen. And so I'm very thankful for them and, and what they have done. There you are, the servant spotlights for this week. Again, uh, thank you so much for listening or, or watching today. I hope that this has been an interesting uh, take on the movie Top Gun Maverick, uh, and a good discussion about uh, the gospel in relation to it. And so I hope you have a great day, and God bless.